The company Color Dreams was notorious for making low-quality, unlicensed games, but later on, they would rebrand their entire company and make Bible-themed games. They even repackaged some of their older games as Bible ones. Why did they do this, and how would Nintendo respond? Let's take a look. What's going on? It's Poger, coming at you with another video. My beard is getting long. Alright, we're gonna talk about Wisdom Tree. We talked about Color Dreams over a year ago, so I thought this would be fitting. So, if you've seen a couple of my videos and you like what I do, hit that subscribe button right there. It only takes a second on your part, but it helps our community grow. And if you want to check out our store, just go to shop.poger.net. We got t-shirts, coffee mugs, and more. Anyway, let's talk about Wisdom Tree. If you were a game developer in the 80s, chances are you would want to make games for the NES. It was the best-selling console at the time, so your games would be more likely to get the spotlight. However, working with Nintendo came at a huge cost. Nintendo restricted companies on how many games they could produce yearly, and even had to sign an exclusivity clause, meaning they couldn't make games for any other developers. It was also expensive to produce games for the NES because Nintendo would make the game companies pay for the great cartridge sales. A lot of publishers thought Nintendo's rules were unfair, but there was nothing they could do. Nintendo was number one, and their competition was far behind. They had no choice but to agree to the harsh demands. But one company thought otherwise. Founded in 1988, the game publisher Color Dreams was publicly against Nintendo's policies, but they still wanted to make games for the NES, so rather than becoming a licensee, they would produce games behind Nintendo's back. Nintendo had a plan, though. To ensure that no one made unlicensed games, Nintendo made a lockout chip called 10NES. The only way a game would play is if the cartridge contained the correct numeric key. The only way to get this numeric key was to be an official licensee of Nintendo. So, how did Color Dreams get around this? They found a very simple method. Their unlicensed games produce a voltage spike that bypasses the lockout chip, so Color Dreams was the first company to find a way to get around Nintendo's chip. Unfortunately for Color Dreams though, making unlicensed games would have disadvantages. Because they had to reverse engineer the NES, they couldn't fully utilize the NES's true capabilities like licensed game companies could. As a result, their first lineup of games would have issues. Baby Boomer, for example, had ugly graphics, poor frame rate, and the music was terrible. Raid 2020 had a lot of the same issues. The graphics are unpleasant, the frame rate is very choppy, and the music sucks. Some of the games were playable. Crystal Mines is a decent maze exploration game where you have to collect all the crystals to advance to the next level. Unlike their other games, the frame rate is actually fine. Captain Comic is an average platformer that also doesn't appear to have frame rate issues. For Color Dream standards, this is a decent game. While some of the games were okay, you can tell just by looking at them that they were not under professional hands. Even if they tried to get a license from Nintendo, there's no way these games would have passed their quality assurance test. So how did Nintendo handle these unlicensed games that were flooding the market? There was nothing they could do legally, but they made it as inconvenient as possible for the companies involved. They pressured retail stores into foregoing all unlicensed games, which impacted Color Dreams negatively. Nintendo also made revisions to the NES so that later models would render unlicensed games useless. With nowhere to sell their games and no way to play their games on newer NES models, Color Dreams was in a rough position. How would they get around this? Well, Color Dreams would come up with a very creative idea. Because Nintendo cut them off from retail stores, unlicensed game companies had a difficult time selling their games. 
The company American Video Entertainment would try to bypass this issue by making an infomercial starring Hulk Hogan. This infomercial actually did help with the sales of their MaxiVision game, although still nothing groundbreaking. Color Dreams, however, had another idea. They would distribute their games in the one place Nintendo didn't have any influence over, Christian bookstores. They noticed that there weren't a lot of religious-themed games on many consoles and thought there was a market for it. Christian bookstores sold books and movies, but did not sell games. With their new business idea, Color Dreams would do a whole rebranding of their company. They changed their name to Wisdom Tree to better match a Christian theme. Under the new name, the company would repackage some of their older titles as religious games and make some new ones. With a new resume of games and a new name, they would get their foot in the door with some Christian bookstores. So now Color Dreams, or rather Wisdom Tree, has a new place to sell their games. Wisdom Tree would send the bookstores a display to put up as well as a promotional VHS tape that showcased Bible adventures. This happens to be the first game under the Wisdom Tree name, so let's check it out. So, it's technically a multi-cart with three games included. The first one is Noah's Ark. Here, it's a Mario-style platformer where you must save the animals by picking up and bringing them to the Ark. The animals have different attributes. For example, the pig cannot be carried until you knock it out with an item. The cows will fall out of your hands every time you jump. Some animals will harm you if you touch them, and some will carry you out of your way. It's very hard to platform because the controls are so slippery. It doesn't help that the frame rate is terrible. For some reason, they made Noah's running speed much quicker than the screen. That's just bad programming. The game doesn't have a lot of replayability because all the levels are exactly the same, it's only the animals that change. Not my favorite game on this collection, but not the worst. The second game is Baby Moses. Here, you must carry Baby Moses to the end of the stage. Much more basic than the other game. If Baby Moses dies, you lose, but for some reason the game still lets you play. At least you can't outrun the screen in this one though. I like the concept of this game, but unfortunately you have no way to attack. All you can do is jump over the enemies. To me, that's not a good game. Like with Noah's Ark, the controls are very slippery. But here, it's worse because there's narrow platforms and bottomless pits. In my opinion, this is the worst game because of the fact that you can't attack. The last game is David and Goliath. Similar to Noah's Ark, you must grab all the sheep and bring them to a specific location. Unlike that game though, the levels actually change, so there's much more replayability here. You also can't outrun the screen, so that's a plus. I wanted to comment on the music. All three games have this very low volume whistle. I assume that Wisdom Tree realized they don't know how to produce music on the NES, so they played it safe. And it doesn't sound bad. Anyway, I consider this the best game on the collection because it fixed the problems that Noah's Ark had. So you can tell these three games obviously run off the same engine. They're playable, but they all have the same slippery controls and bad frame rate. With some small changes, these games would have been decent. But to be fair, for Wisdom Tree standards, this is a good effort, and slightly better than their past games under the Color Dreams branding. Bible Adventures would end up being a big success for Wisdom Tree, and it would sell 350,000 copies, which is respectable for an unlicensed game. In general, Bible-themed games were taking off a lot more than the company expected, so they went on to make more titles. Let's take a look at Bible Buffet. It's a video board game where you spin the wheel and advance however many spaces. Then, depending on where you land, you have to play a minigame. Here, it's a top-down perspective and you have to make it to the end without dying. There's items you can collect, but they're optional. Along the way, you get weapon upgrades, like a spread shot which comes in handy. The game has some decent variety, with the graphics changing depending on what stage you're on. The game has voice synthesis and it sounds great for NES standards. Player 1. Alright! The only oddity, this game has nothing to do with the Bible or Christianity, besides the title. I think they only called it Bible Buffet to get it on shelves at Christian bookstores. Can't really blame them for that. Overall, this is a decent game. Bible Buffet was one of Wisdom Tree's last games on the NES, and the company was really starting to improve. Wisdom Tree not only made new titles, but they repackaged some of their older titles when they were still under the Color Dreams name. 
Thankfully, they were very careful with this and they only recycled their okay games, not their bad ones. Here's Exodus. This is a ROM hack of Crystal Mines. Thankfully, the levels are changed too, so it's not just a graphical hack. Anyway, you play as Moses and you must collect all the items to complete the stage. There's enemies and rocks that you have to avoid, but thankfully you can shoot them with your projectiles. In between stages, you have to answer some Bible-related questions. If you get enough of them right, you get an extra life. I think it's smart that Color Dreams repackaged Crystal Mines because it's one of their best games and now it has a new place where it can be sold. I do have a bone to pick with Joshua in the Battle of Jericho though. The game was originally meant to be a platformer and in Flyers we can clearly see something that looks similar to Bible Adventures. But when playing the final product, it's just another hack of Crystal Mines. What happened to the platformer? They should have stuck with that. Another game they turned into a Bible game was Menace Beach. Here, you play as a skateboarder and you must save your girlfriend from Demon Dan. The game originally came out in 1990, but Wisdom Tree decided to repackage it as Sunday Funday. In this new game, your girlfriend has been completely written out of the script and now the premise is that you must make it to Sunday School. They changed around some of the graphics to make them more appropriate, but otherwise the levels and gameplay are exactly the same. Anyway, it's a platformer with beat-em-up attributes. Sometimes the screen will lock in place and you must defeat all the enemies in order to progress. You have this spin attack, but it's really bad. It almost never hits your target and you'll usually end up flailing it repeatedly hoping for the best. The heavy set enemies are the worst in the game because you can't attack them. The only way they can die is if you lure them into a bomb, but it's very difficult to do. Half the time, they'll walk away and you have to try again. The sewer stages are also very annoying. The lights constantly turn off and there's tons of obstacles that can push you in all kinds of directions. It almost feels like I'm playing a pinball game. But I gotta give some credit. The graphics are very nice and colorful and it actually is a decent fun platformer. So between the two versions, you would think I'd recommend the original, but Sunday Fun Day actually makes a very big improvement. The frame rate is much better in this one than in Menace Beach. They fixed one of the biggest problems of the original game and it shows that Wisdom Tree was learning from their past mistakes. Bad frame rate was one of the biggest problems in their older titles and they finally figured it out. So how did Nintendo handle Wisdom Tree releasing their games in Christian themed bookstores? Well, because they were afraid of public backlash, Nintendo didn't do anything to stop them. Wisdom Tree found a way to bypass Nintendo without any consequences and it resulted in great success. Shockingly, up until 2022, Wisdom Tree continued to exist and even had a website open with their games for sale and an option to play them online. However, as of 2023, the site would be taken down and we have no idea what happened to them. I looked up their trademark and it doesn't appear to exist anymore, although I'm not an expert at this so I might be missing something. Color Dreams was openly against Nintendo since day one and would do everything they could to get around them. Their first line of games were very poor quality and they were having trouble selling them because of Nintendo cornering unlicensed game developers. But with a rebranding, the company, now under Wisdom Tree, finally found a home for their games. This time, they would fix their past mistakes and make games that were higher quality. Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.